Hello creators, today I'm going to talk about the five biggest problems I have with this new M1 MacBook Air. I have the base model right here and my biggest problem is actually what you might not expect. So I'll tell you that at the end. So I'm coming from a digital creator perspective. I make content online and let me show you these two error messages that I got yesterday while working on a video for this Creators Unbox channel, all right? The first one is a, an Adobe Premiere message. While I was editing this video, Adobe Premiere crashed on me. Adobe Premiere is running on Rosetta, so it's more prone to errors like this. It just quit actually three times after this. All right, and it had problems exporting as well. And the other problem I had was with Photoshop. All right, you can see right here, Photoshop quit on me as well. So if you're a creator, you might not be able to get the optimal experience with the Adobe suite. And the next problem, I didn't have this, but I've seen a lot of reviewers and commenters online that have this problem. So it is with a Bluetooth issue. Um, people are reporting that they weren't able to connect some Bluetooth devices. And let me show you what I have connected. So right here, I have the MX Master 3 mouse. All right, I have that connected and it is working perfectly, right? You can see this. And then I have a, a wireless keyboard and this is a pretty good keyboard. This keyboard is a wireless mechanical keyboard, all right, see? It is, and all the short, and all the shortcuts and function keys are working, is working, all right. And the best thing about this keyboard, it was only like 40 bucks. So if you wanna get it, I'll link it in the description. So overall, I would say this Bluetooth problem is pretty rare and you will probably not run into it. All right, the next issue I have with this new MacBook is because I got the base model, you can see right here, I'm actually running out of storage after only a week of usage. I only have 53 gigabytes left. And the reason is because I make videos and I film in 4K for you guys. So take a look at the video files. This video file is 30 gigabytes for this one video. And then let's get information on the next video. It is 57 gigabytes for another video. And uh, let's get, and then another 25. If you play games or make content at all, you'll not be able to survive with a 250 gigabyte internal SSD, but there's an easy fix to this. So all you gotta do is you gotta get an external SSD. I have the stand disk right here. And this one is really fast and it's tiny. Look, it's tiny. You can just carry this anywhere and you don't have to worry about dropping it because it's SSD, right? It's not a hard drive. And basically you just connect it. It's very easy to connect. It just shows up right here. And the speed is really fast as well. I'll link this in the description in case you want to check it out. And there might be some sales going on during the holiday season. The next problem is actually with the YouTube reviewers. All right. They set the expectations for this M1 MacBook so high for me when I got it. They thinking like it's magical. You can run anything in Adobe Premiere because the reason is when they're doing the testing, they're only dragging in like one footage, right? So when you're only doing one track editing, obviously it's gonna be smooth. But when I was editing like my multi-track footage, so this is like a multi-cam with two different camera angles. And when I was editing this both in 4K, it yeah, yeah, did stutter a little bit. So like if I'm running two different footage and like, um, multi-track timelines on half resolution it's fine but on full resolution look it kind of lagged a little bit when i stop and play and when i scroll like it lags a little bit but overall i would say it's a lot smoother than comparable laptops at a similar size and price all right, so I want you to get this laptop with like a realistic expectation coming in.
it's not going to solve all of your editing problems. And another point on performance is when it gets to a low battery, the performance literally just like dies. Like Adobe slows down and everything just feels super, super slow. So just keep that in mind when you're taking this MacBook on the go. All right, this last problem I said is something that you might not expect. And it's something that the reviewers don't talk about. This MacBook is a huge, huge, fingerprint magnet like if you just touch it at all just hold it anywhere it leaves a mark and my fingers look I don't work in a farm my fingers are very clean and the biggest problem is not with the fingerprints but how dirty the fingerprints look on this MacBook like it looks like you've had this for a year and it has been through the dumpster after you just touch it a couple of times. It's gonna leave a bad impression on other people. And I think at this point, the question you're all wondering is would I buy this M1 MacBook again if I knew about these problems ahead of time? And I think my answer will still be yes. Because despite these problems, I've overall had a pretty smooth experience and pleasant experience working with this new M1 MacBook on content creation using the Adobe Suite Photoshop, surfing the web, playing games and stuff like that. It has been so easy to carry around and the main thing is I don't need to leave it plugged in all the time so I can work on the couch, work on the floor, work in the bed, you know, do whatever. Click here to watch the next video and keep creating creators.